I realized this morning I've been so busy with work, with filming a ton of content for YouTube and Instagram and reading all about some health stuff that I feel totally out of the loop when it comes to new beauty launches. So today I'm gonna look through trend mood, see what the new launches are, and then see if I'd be interested in buying and reviewing any of them. It'll most likely be more of an anti-haul because I'm trying not to spend a lot of money on beauty right now, but let's see if there's anything that catches my eye. Okay, one product I do know that launched that may or may not be on trend mood is the new Say Sun Visor Sunscreen. Now, they had the old formula and this is a reformulated version. And it's really interesting, they reformulated it to include encapsulated vitamin C and they added a sort of shimmery gold pearl finish for a more glowy look. And I just think this is so weird because their original Sun Visor Sunscreen was literally the wettest looking sunscreen I've ever applied in my life. It was like someone super soaked my face. So I'm so curious, like who thought that sunscreen was not glowy enough that they needed to add like a highlighter effect. I just don't know who asked for that, you know? Maybe it's awesome. I'm not gonna be picking it up because vitamin C and I don't get along very well, but I'm super interested. If you've tried the original sun visor, would you want it with encapsulated vitamin C and a gold sheen? So as I'm going through trend mood, I'm just gonna pick out a couple different posts that I think will be most relevant for everyone. For example, I'm not gonna talk about this like makeup forever gummy bear collab. That's just a bunch of like makeup remover exfoliating cloths. Like I have no opinion on that, you know? So I'm gonna stick to what I think we would normally talk about. And the first thing, that I see already, wow, that catches my eye, is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Blushes and Highlighters. I'm actually wearing um, her Skin Fetish Blush in Flirtatious right now, but I added Max Glow Play and Rosie Does It on top. You know, I said that I love Flirtatious and I do, but it fades so fast off my skin that I find I have to like layer it a lot. So I think if I were to go with another one of the Skin Fetish Blushes, I would probably get one that's a little bit darker. It's interesting, so these launches are blush duos, so they're two-toned blushes, and you can use either one or you can mix them. I think that's really interesting, but I would wanna see how the colors look swirled together. You know, it's kinda hard to see what you're getting, but off the top of my head, that bottom middle shade of the blush, that kind of like rich brown mixed with that beige, looks like it could be the powder version of Victoria Beckham mini skirt, and I've actually been looking for a color like that in a powder. I'm also very interested in the bottom right, that rich red, like orangey red color with this kind of plum shade. I'm really interested in seeing what color that creates. That could be so beautiful. I think I would really just wanna see what these shades look like swirled together so I know what the look could be. In theory, I like this because it's like you're getting three blushes for the price of one, and that sounds really appealing to me. Like, oh, maybe when I go on vacation, I could just take this one, you know, the maybe the top right, and I have like a tan beige blush, I have a rose blush, and then I swirl them together and it's a little bit of a lighter pink, but I don't know if I have a brush small enough to fit into the left side of that blush. So then really, is it only intended to swirl around? And in that case, I'd probably rather just not have a duo and just see what the color is when they're swirled together. But honestly, it's the kind of thing I'd probably wait to go swatch at Sephora, but I would consider picking up. As for the highlighters, this is where I'm most interested. So I've been looking at my collection. There are two blushes I own that do not play well with cream highlighters, and I only own cream or liquid highlighters. So I've been hunting for a powder highlighter. I want something that's just really skin-like, not shimmery at all, not super blinding. Like the only powder highlighter I think I've ever owned is the, the Balm Mary Luminizer. Loved that, but it was definitely intense. So, these highlighters look great. I think I would probably go for the top right. It's like a little bit less yellow than a champagne and it's it seems like it's light, but it's not white. So I would definitely be interested in that. I'll put up a picture of the close-ups of the blush duos. So it says that they are blush duos with a long wearing demi matte and satin finish. Um, and then in the description, it says that some of them have a matte finish, some of them have a pearl. And those pearl colors, I'm super interested in. I love those like slightly shimmery blushes. So I don't know, this one, this one, I could be convinced to buy these. I'm gonna skip the Moira Cosmetics color correctors because I don't know that brand and I don't use color correctors. Sol de Janeiro is now releasing three different perfumes. They're like perfume misters in Sea and Soul, 
tan lines and tropical nights. I mean, if you just look at the packaging alone, like this is not the kind of perfume I would reach for. This is very, very young. And when I've tried their products, like the Boom Boom Cream and some others, I just thought they were so overly fragranced for me. They gave me a headache. So I personally don't really think this is a brand that aligns with my preferences. Next, we have the Liss Beauty Bronzer Stick. That shade range looks beautiful. Looks like there's a shade that would be light enough for my skin, although it is quite yellow looking. I really like the way that these look. There's kind of this like really creamy finish on them that looks super appealing. But you know, I've got my Say Sun Melt Bronzer in light and that does the job for me. If I were to find that bronzer, in a lighter, more cool tone shade, then I would declutter that, give it to a friend and purchase another cream bronzer. And that is something I'm considering. I feel like it's the summer of cream bronzers already. I heard there's a new NARS one. Um, there's the List one. There's the new Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer. I think there's a makeup by Mario. So out of all of those, there might be a shade that actually works for me. But right now, I think I'm good. Next, we have the new Dyson Airwrap Multi Styler. It's basically the updated version of their original Airwrap, which I was really interested in. But this one has new and re-engineered attachments with enhanced Coanda Airflow, an aerodynamic phenomenon that uses air to attach and wrap hair to the barrel or to the surface of the brush. So basically, you can curl your hair, you can smooth, you can shape it, you can hide flyaways. It comes with a a ton of different attachments and it's $600. I'm really not good at styling my hair, especially anything that is like a blow dryer. I just like to dry my hair and then curl it and that's all I can do. I don't think I have the skills to even be able to use the majority of these attachments. So I'm gonna skip and wait and see if some of the reviews are fantastic and people are saying like, this is a life-changing product. I would consider it when there's a sale, but I would never buy full price for any Dyson stuff because it's, it's just too expensive. Ooh, okay, I'm interested in this. I didn't think I was gonna be uh, excited about any launches because I've been feeling so satisfied in my collection, but this looks right up my alley. This is the Fenty The Cherry Treat Conditioning Lip Oil. One of the things I love is the scent of cherries and any kind of like cherry lip product, anything like that, love it. I feel like no one has cherry scented products. I'm dying for In Beauty to come out with like a real juicy smelling cherry lip glaze. This looks like it could be really similar. It's described as an ultra hydrating lip oil that goes on clear and cushions lips with decadent fruit oils and vitamin rich cherry extracts. It does have a fruity cherry scent. So I think I need to get it just for the fact that I've been craving a cherry scented lip product in my collection for years and haven't found one that was really good. If you know of any that are like a real cherry smelling scent and not like a medicinal cherry, let me know. Um, I'm obviously a little disappointed that this goes on clear, but it basically looks exactly like the In Beauty lip glazes. And if it's a scent that I love, hell yeah, I would buy this in a heartbeat. I'm gonna skip the Pride Month release from Trixie Cosmetics, because I really don't know that brand. Um, but let's talk about Kim Kardashian's new skincare line. This is called Skin, it's spelled S-K-K-N. So I already saw Hope Mess Tom talk about the skin release from Kim Kardashian in their new video, Critical Sass. Hope Mess Tom's Critical Sass series is so, 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 so good. Though I already have a little bit of an opinion formed in my mind after watching Tom. I think, I pretty much agree with what everyone has said about this already. The packaging looks Beautiful. The packaging looks like Dune to me, and I'm really interested in that. It's got this kind of like satin matte. It almost looks like the products are wrapped in leather. It looks really cool. I would love like all of my beauty products to look like this. I think it looks fantastic. Um, however, I would never buy this. I would never trust a celebrity and a celebrity team to develop like breakthrough innovative skincare formulas. So I think that if you're gonna buy something from skin, it's probably just because of the aesthetics and because you probably really like Kim Kardashian, but I don't think you're gonna get anything brand spanking new here. Um, I also did hear that the hyaluronic acid serum was $90, so it seems like she's deviated from her price point a little bit. I mean, you could get it for like $10 at the Inky List. Hope Mess Tom also had a really good point. Like Kim Kardashian is not using this line. You know, Kim Kardashian spends tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars on beauty treatments and skincare. 
I would highly doubt that she would be using this line too. And so it's just not something that would be for me. Makeup Forever came out with some new face palettes. It's called their HD Skin Face Palettes. Um, and it looks like there's only six shades, but there's actually 12 per palette. So obviously I think this is more geared towards makeup artists, but maybe if you're someone who just wants to have everything in one place, this could be cool for you. I do not like face palettes. That's basically the only reason I've never purchased anything from Salt New York. As soon as Salt New York comes out with like sleek single pan packaging, then I will 100% sign up and be on board. I just really don't like face palettes. It's not practical for me. It doesn't fit in my drawers. Any palettes go in my palette drawer and they are like gone and forgotten. But I can see this being fantastic for a makeup artist and for someone who needs to use a kit. I mean, it comes with cream foundations, um, concealers, correctors, blushes, contouring shades, and a highlighter. So. I think that would make sense, just not for me. Oh, we've got a JLo product. Yeah, again, I would not buy something from JLo's line. She's like, olive oil is what makes my skin look so beautiful. It's like, bitch, no, it's the hundreds of thousands of dollars of beauty treatments that you do on your skin that makes it look amazing. Plus probably all the great food you eat and the exercise, but like, let's not, Let's not lead people astray here, please. So it's the Overnight Hustle AHA and BHA Resurfacer. It's $58 and it's a chemical exfoliant. Not interested. We have a new collaboration between Rihanna and Mac. I love Rihanna. I love Mac. That would be a match made in heaven. It is the cream color base in the shade Diamonds. Now this looks like a beautiful color. It's like a tan mixed with a little bit of a champagne. Unfortunately, I don't love the Mac cream color base texture. It is kind of like a powdery cream. Yeah, I was gonna say a creamy powder, powdery cream. It's like a powdery cream. When you touch it, it's very hard and you kind of have to work it into the skin to warm it up. I may have just not had the skills at the time to be able to perfectly use it because I know it was a staple in a lot of people's collections way back when, but I had the cream color base in Hush and I just always found that it, it was really just hard to pick up enough product. So I think I would skip this. If it were a different formula, I would consider it though, because this color looks like it would be like a skin-like kind of highlighter for me, which is my kind of color. I'm gonna skip Juvia's Place lashes because I don't wear lashes. I'm gonna skip the Spectrum Collections Bridal Gift Box. It's a brush set. Okay, so House Labs. House Labs is Lady Gaga's brand, and it seems like they have totally rebranded and they're picked up at Sephora. So it seems like now they're gonna try to be more Sephora-centric instead of whatever they were doing before. I did see one of my friends say that this just looks like a total ripoff of About Face, which is Halsey's brand, and Danessa Myricks, like the cream color um, fixes and all of those. But I think this looks, I can see the appeal here. I just don't think there's anything new. What I will say is I love how many shades of the bronzer there are. I mean, that's great. The highlighters are the ones I was most interested in because like I said, I'm looking for a powder highlighter. They're $40, $40, that's insane. Bronzer's 38, the lip oil is 24, the pigment paints are 24. Yeah, it's gonna be a skip from me. If I'm you know, looking at the pictures here on the screen, the eye pencils look like Urban Decay. Lip crayons look like the Makeup Forever like aqua pencils. The eyeshadows, like the cream pigments look like about Face or Janessa Myricks. The bronzers look like Patrick Ta, and the highlighters look like Huda Beauty or like the new RMS ones that just came out. I don't know who's doing the branding here. I particularly don't like the way that the lip crayons look. That looks really cheap to me. What looks appealing are those brow pencils. I mean, look at those shades. And one of my friends on Instagram said, if those brow pencils were actually eye pencils, it would be like the best eye pencil range ever because she and I have always just wanted a range of like every different kind of brown in all different undertones, like some that are kind of yellowy, some that are kind of mauvey brown, just like creamy brown eyeliners, all shades of brown, and that would be so good. But uh, looks like they are brow pencils and brow pencils are a little like too waxy to use on your eyelids. So yeah, you know, these might be really wonderful products, but at that price point and the fact that it's nothing new here, I feel like it's probably only worth buying if you're just a huge Lady Gaga fan. So I'm gonna skip, but oh, I found something else I'm interested in. I did not think I was gonna want anything. Okay, so NYX is one of my favorite drugstore brands and they just launched 
the This Is Milky Gloss without looking at anything. Milky being used to describe a lip gloss is a red flag for me because milky always looks like when you think of a milky gloss, think of like Tower 28, Oat, like the really light shades, they just settle into lip lines and look quite unflattering on people. Anything milky is always like hard pass. So I'd be interested to see how these actually look on people. A single swipe delivers a buildable splash of milky color with a sweet milkshake taste and fragrance. Infused with dairy-free hashtag vegan milk for 12 hours of quenching hydration. What kind of vegan milk? Why doesn't it just tell me what milk it is? I don't know. The studio swatches are really misleading. Let's zoom in on Choco Latte Chic, which would be the one that I would be most interested in. The model with the lightest skin, even though I'm definitely lighter um, than they are, the color looks, looks great. That's what I would go for. It's kind of like a cross between, I don't know, like a brown with a little bit of a rosiness or a peachiness in there. There's some warmth for sure. But if you look at the artificial swatch, it's like the total opposite of the color that it looks like on the model's lips. It's like way, 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 way more gray and a lot lighter. So I have no idea what I would be getting if I ordered that. The other one I would probably consider is Salted Caramel Shake. That looks like it could be pretty, but then you're kind of getting into the territory of it's practically clear, why am I buying this at all? I have like a hundred light nude lip glosses. I don't need anything else. So really I would only buy one of these if I could find a color that I don't already have in my collection. And I wouldn't consider something like mint chocolate chip shake, like the clear green one. But that's how I'm thinking about makeup consumption these days. I'm only buying products that I don't think I own. I'm sure a ton of my friends online are gonna review this. So I'm gonna wait for their reviews. And if they say the formula is great, it doesn't like settle into lines and they smell good, then I will probably pick one up. Okay, let's talk about RMS. Um, this seems like an interesting step for RMS. This doesn't seem in line with their other products or packaging. They've always been very much about like coconut oil, cream products, lots of creams, things like that. Um, I would be interested in this if I supported the brand. I don't. There's a very well-documented history of the founder, Rosemary Swift, being super, super racist like some really, really gross shit. So I will leave that in the description box. I have some links to some highlights online about RMS. Um, at the end of the day, I don't want my money going to that. So I just don't purchase from RMS in general. I have a new powder foundation from Tarte. It's their Amazonian clay blurring powder foundation. Now I wasn't into it until I heard the word blurring. And then I was like, add to cart. I've always been interested in powder foundations. I tried one from Sephora ages and ages ago, but I wouldn't use it as a foundation. I would use it as a setting powder. If it mattifies my skin and it adds some coverage, I think that is like the most beautiful way to set your makeup. Because when I have kind of my shininess and my T-zone coming in, that's also in those oilier spots is where my foundation or my concealer tends to wear off the fastest because you know, you're getting your oils there, skin kind of moves a little bit. So I would love a powder foundation that's blurring to just mattify my T-zone, add a little bit of coverage back. I think that sounds great. These pans look really large though, so may not be exactly what I want. But unfortunately, I'll put up a picture of the swatches here. It looks like the shade 12N wouldn't even be light enough for me. These artificial swatches mean nothing. I think we should just stop doing artificial swatches. Give me real swatches on real skin and real natural lighting and then we'll talk. But otherwise, swatches are pointless. This is definitely the kind of product I would be interested in uh, swatching at Sephora. I'm really excited because we're going to New York on June 9th and so I will have plenty of Sephora's to pop into along the way. Hopefully I can test this powder foundation while I'm there because it's something that I could definitely see myself using if they have my shade. I don't really know Makeup Revolution, so I'm gonna skip that. There's a new Too Faced Born This Way SPF 45 Vitamin C Moisturizing Primer. It sounds like it's kind of supposed to be your moisturizer, your vitamin C serum, and your sunscreen in one. That's cool if you're like, I want everything in one product, just a one and done kind of thing, but I'm not like that. I want to layer my skincare and I also wouldn't trust Too Faced to be coming out with like all of the best formulas. I would definitely skip that one. Now we have the Charlotte Tilbury 
Beautiful Skin Sun Kissed Glow Cream Bronzer. I definitely don't like the packaging on these. It reminds me of like very old school Estee Lauder, which is an interesting decision. Looking at the swatches online, it looks like these cream bronzers are gonna be a little too dark for me. Now, the shade Fair does look a little bit lighter than the Say Sun Melt Bronzer. So this might work better for me, but again, I would really have to wait and swatch it at Sephora to see if I could declutter my Say Sun Melt, find something a little lighter, a little bit more cool toned, um, and then I would possibly buy this. Um, I would just have to see if it's the kind of product that matches me. Okay, anytime I see concealer, I'm like, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. So there's a new Huda Beauty concealer. It's their Faux Filter Luminous Matte Liquid Concealer. What does luminous matte mean? So it's luminous, which means it's not matte. How does that work? Is that just a satin finish? Is that like a natural finish? I, how do you have a luminous matte? Those are two things that contradict each other. But I digress. It's a medium to full coverage concealer. It has a luminous matte skin-like finish. Okay, skin-like, that's what they're going for. It's more of like a satin natural skin-like finish. Okay, yeah, then I would be interested in it. When I saw matte, I was like, mm -mm gonna be too drying. Doesn't crease, doesn't collect or settle in fine lines, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, lots of claims here. I would be interested in it. Still can't ever find a concealer shade that matches me. Maybe this will be the one. There's also now a new tubing mascara from Tarte. It is their Tartlet Tubing Mascara Duo. I don't know what's a duo about it. It's talking about the formula and then the brush. Maybe that's what it is. You can see in the images of the models that it's a little clumpy and my friend Rudy Berry tried it. Um, she has a YouTube channel here. I'll link her below and it was very clumpy looked very clumpy on her and she and I test a lot of tubing mascaras and don't usually have that issue So I'm gonna pass on that. There is a pretty cool looking new color pop collection called the resting beach face collection a lot of beautiful bronzes browns champagnes greens, which is kind of interesting there are six matte bronzers and then there's a So Glassy Lip Gloss. I don't really buy a ton from ColourPop, especially in their limited edition collections. I just really love their concealers. That is where I think they shine super well. Otherwise, I just think that they release products so often, I get a little bit burnt out by them. But what does look cool is that their lip glosses that they came out with is just a range of like beiges all the way up to really rich browns. So that's a shade range I can appreciate. Here's another interesting one. Makeup by Mario came out with these Skin transformers. So there's a soft sculpt transforming skin enhancer, a complexion balm that warms, tints, and even skin tone with a dewy finish in six shades for $30. Then there's a soft sculpt transforming skin perfector, which is a blend of perfecting powders that blur, illuminate, and set the skin with a radiant glowing finish in five shades for $34. For me, this feels like it's all about marketing and retraining people to think this is something different than a bronzer. Though I haven't tried it and I'll, I'll wait to see what people say, in the footage here, it really just looks like it's um, a cream bronzer. Sure, maybe there's like some blurring technology to it, I'm not sure, but it looks like a cream bronzer. And then the Transforming Skin Perfector. So there are three parts to it. It's like a shimmery highlighter, a medium kind of shimmery highlighter, and then a more matte looking, but not matte bronzer. So it seems like you could use all three or swirl them. But in this footage here, it looks really shimmery, like really, really shimmery. So I don't know that I would want that all over my face. Maybe it's not just a marketing ploy. Maybe these are something more than just a cream bronzer and a, a luminous powder bronzer. So I'll wait to see what the reviews say, but it's not something I'm particularly interested in. Here we go again. Okay, we have the NARS. Uh, Laguna Bronzing Cream Bronzers. Has a natural looking finish, comes in five shades. Based on the swatches, it looks like this one actually would be light enough for me, but I think it looks still a little bit too orange. Another one that I would have to swatch in stores. I just can't tell by any of these swatches if it's gonna be light enough. I honestly don't remember hearing much about these bronzers, if it was a good formula or not. But what I do appreciate is it does look like there are different undertones in the shade range. Like Laguna 4 looks super, super, super warm compared to Laguna 3, which looks a lot more neutral, maybe even slightly cool tone. So we'll see. I'll try to swatch it at Sephora. Ooh, this looks cool. I don't know what this is or who this is. 
So this is a new beauty brand. Is Isamaya, Isamaya, Isamaya. I'm sure they're like super famous and I just don't know who it is. I love that this is edgier. I love that this is different. They're going for spidery lashes. They're going for this kind of like dystopian future. There will be an eyeshadow palette, a rubber lash mascara, and a pomade that laminates the eyebrow. So interesting. So it's really nothing new. Like the products themselves aren't new, but the campaign images are really drawing me in with that aesthetic. So I'll keep my, I'll, I'll keep my eye out for the brand. Next we have the new Fenty, the Poutsicle Hydrating Lip Stain. I actually just watched a YouTube video this morning reviewing all of these shades and I'm going to skip as beautiful as they looked on the YouTuber. These colors are just so bright. If they came out with something that were more like beige or brown, I would totally be interested in a hydrating glossy lip stain. I love that idea. I just don't really need to be reaching for all of these bright popsicle shades. I just reach for like my lips but better colors. Don't think it's the product that's for me. The next product is a new collection from Rose Ink. So we have a line of four different cream bronzers and five different highlighters. I guess I just gotta go to Sephora and wait to swatch all of these cream bronzers in person because cream bronzer overload, am I right? The highlighters look pretty. The packaging though really doesn't appeal to me. That bulky toilet lid packaging would not fit in my makeup drawers very well. And it looks quite large. I like kind of smaller items I can carry in my bag more easily. So packaging wise, this wouldn't appeal to me and I don't really have any brand loyalty. So not my kind of thing. Oh, and here we go. Yeah, we've got M Cosmetics Cors Corslet. Corselette Sculpting Powder Bronzer, powder bronzers. It looks fine. They look like powder bronzers. I don't think four shades for a bronzer is enough. The first three shades look exactly the same and then there's one dark shade. And there's like almost no variation in between the shades it seems. That just might be of course the artificial swatches. Artificial swatches are just terrible. And the studio photos too, just like really don't ever do colors justice, I find. Because if this is accurate, then the first three shades are almost exactly the same. I wouldn't be interested in it because I bought that Makeup by Mario bronzer uh, in the shade light a few months ago and I love it. It's all I need. Oh, okay. So the fashion brand Off-White just launched a makeup line. So there's Imprint Face and Body Solid Pigment. Seems like they're just eyeshadow crayons in different colors, like a bunch of greens, browns, reds, blues. I'll put up some of the hero images for the campaign. I'm into that. I think that looks cool, but I, I don't think it's anything new. $42 for an eyeshadow crayon is a lot of money, but obviously they're a designer brand and they're launching into the beauty space. So if you're a brand loyal to Off-White, then I can see why you might want one of their beauty products. But for me, I would pass. There's the new Ordinary, the Multi-Peptide Lash and Brow Serum. Designed to promote the look of thicker, fuller, and healthier lashes and brows. Yeah, I would be interested in that because it's the Ordinary. It's $14.50. And as I'm getting older, I'm noticing that my brows are thinning out a little bit and that's a little scary. So yeah, this is something I could see myself picking up. Oh, right. Okay, so Chloe Morello, the beauty YouTuber, launched a skincare line and it's called Sireni Beauty. It's spelled like siren but with an eye at the end so sireni or sireni beauty it sounds like something pretty cool it's called the overnight haul rejuvenating beauty mask oh it's sixty dollars whoa okay so it's a sleeping mask with effective levels of bakuchiol and dha work overnight to turn back time soothe and even out your skin tone while a delicate mix of rose oil and shea butter wraps you up in luxurious hydration uh, my skin doesn't seem to really love rose oil and i don't like that price of sixty dollars Interesting though, I like the uh, the inclusion of DHA, which is the self tanning ingredient. I think that's kind of nice that she's putting DHA in like a moisturizer, an overnight moisturizer. It looks like a nice lightweight moisturizer. And then, you know, it's got that self tanning ingredient in it. So you wake up with a nice little glow. Not for me though, I would not spend $60 on that. I would rather, you know, just apply my loving tan mousse all over my face for two hours and then wash it off. Next, we have the Hygen Skin Glass Energizing and Hydrating Primer Serum from Natasha Denona. Now, Natasha Denona came out very quickly with an apology after people pointed out that she pretty much stole the exact font, product idea, and packaging from a brand called Skin Glass Beauty. Natasha Denona basically owned up to it and said, we totally dropped the ball on this. 
like I can't believe we didn't do our due diligence to find that there's a product with this exact name, blah, 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 blah. Do with that what you will, but I certainly would not be buying this product. I love my In Beauty face glaze, so I don't even need anything else like this either. Okay, and then the last launch I have are two new Forget the Filler glosses from Lawless Beauty. I didn't see this on Trend Mood, but I did see this on my feed and I was really interested in it. I love the Lawless Forget the Filler glosses. They are so thick, they are sticky, but they add this like glass-like shine over your lips. If you have vertical lip lines, like I'm definitely starting to get a bunch beyond just the natural lip lines that you're born with. I'm starting to get some like, you know, as I age and it really just smooths over them so beautifully and really makes the lips look fuller by smoothing over those lines. So it's a gloss formula I love. What I hate though about Lawless is they always release these shades as limited edition colors and then they'll wait a year and then they'll like launch it as a permanent shade. They did that with George, Glazed, and a couple others. So I know that they'll probably do that with this one too. Most recently they came out with a shade called Sex Pot that they only did a tiny limited edition launch for and I'm so bummed. It's like my perfect juicy, juicy, rosy red lip. It's more of a, like a pinky rose than a red, but it does have some depth in there and it looks like it would have been like my ideal shade. It looks close to Fit Glow Gospel, but a little more pink. So I'm hoping they bring that back, but they did launch a trio on QVC. It's exclusive to QVC and it's with their original shade, Rosy Outlook, which is just their clear. And then it included a new one, Cherry Vanilla, which is just this beautiful, bright, slightly pinky red that's sheer and ugh, looks so good. And then they launched Cali Sunset, which is a rose with gold glitter. Cali Sunset looks exactly like Rose from Fit Glow in their lip serum formula, so I would just skip that one. I might skip Cherry Vanilla though, even if they do launch it as a permanent shade, because I just really don't ever reach for reds. It's like the one color I rarely reach for. Like, you know, I'll reach for these darker berries. I find that more flattering on me than something like a brighter red. As much as I'm like really drawn to this image of cherry vanilla, I think I would wait and I would see if Sex Pot comes back because that's the one I want. But if you are interested in the trio, it looks like you can get all three for about $49, plus a few bucks for shipping and handling. Yeah, I'm not gonna spend like $50 on a lip gloss trio <laughs> from Lawless, but if they ever bring back the shade Sex Pot, I would definitely buy that. I do think that their their lip glosses are fantastic. Woo, I gotta be real with you. I quit drinking coffee a few days ago and I am like struggle bussing to get through this video. If you're new here, thanks for watching. I promise I don't always have a toilet in my video, um, but I would love for you to subscribe. And if you made it this far, thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.